Hi everybody, I think that many of you have tried this kind of Kinder Bueno bar. Let's open it up. We're gonna make the exact same one, just in a big size. But first you need to try it. On the outside we have chocolate, then a waffle layer with nut paste, and then the cream itself, which is also pretty nutty. The first thing we need is a big, huge mold. Our dad's gonna make it for us from this huge pipe. Using a tape measure, we measure out a meter of 20 and mark it with a marker. From the side, we drill a hole with a screwdriver and then cut the pipe with a jigsaw. Now we're gonna draw along and cut the pipe into exactly two parts. Now we will make a stand out of wood. To do this, we cut a large board into two parts. Circle the outer diameter of the pipe and cut it with the jigsaw. With sandpaper, we knock down all of the burrs. Two such details are needed. We need a wide board to put between them and tighten everything with screws. Two large semicircles were also carved out of wood, and three smaller ones, but at the same time they are twice as wide. We put half of the pipe on the stand, lubricate a large semicircle with glue, and put it into the pipe. Additionally, we fix them with screws. We put the missing parts in. and our form is ready. But in order to be used, we take some small half circles and wrap them with some cling film. Done. Then we lubricate our mold with some oil. We're gonna smear it along the walls. and then glue down some parchment paper. Then we put everything back in its place. Let's start our cooking with the nuts. There are 20 kilograms of them here. We transfer them into a meat grinder. And grind them through a small nozzle. Now we'll need to melange sugar, and cocoa. We collect one kilogram of crushed nuts. Then turn on the melange and pour them in. By the way, at first while the mass is dry, it can stop. Therefore, we'll help it out. Then add in some sugar and cocoa powder. After about 40 minutes, we'll get a chocolate nut paste. We'll just tilt our melange and put all of the paste into a pan. Thus, we turn 10 kilograms of nuts into the paste. Done. Now let's make our dough for the waffles. We break 48 eggs into a big gastro pan. Add three kilograms of sugar. For taste, we'll use some vanilla sugar. And then we go to the butter. Cut off 1.5 kilograms and put it into a saucepan. Also add one kilogram of margarine. Let's put all this onto the stove. Melt and pour into our big catering pan. Let's whisk our mix until it's smooth. 
way to stay to pour in three kilograms of flour. And then finally knead the dough. Done. We scoop it up with a spoon and put it into our waffle iron. We close them. And after three minutes, they're ready. You can get them out. And then we open up our nut paste and spread a thick layer onto the waffle. Then we glue it inside of the mold. We worked with like a conveyor belt, really. And while one was making waffles, four waffle irons at once, the second was putting them into a mold until it was completely filled. Well, let's go to the cream. We open up some bottled chicken eggs and pour them into a bowl. There are 20 eggs in each bottle, and so we have 10 of them in total. Pour in three kilograms of flour and mix it all with a mixer until smooth. And then we made this thicker and we will cook the cream in such a huge saucepan. We take a lot of milk out of the refrigerator. Open them up. And pour them into a large saucepan. Then we put this under the burner, cover with the lid, and turn on the gas. As soon as the milk is heated, we add in 12 kilograms of sugar to it. And mix it all with a construction mixer. Without stopping stirring, pour in the thickener into a thin stream. You also need to melt three kilograms of butter. Pour this into the cream. And here are the remaining crushed nuts. Mix them into our cream. You gotta do this until it's smooth. It's already thickened up, so we pour it into our mold. Spread out the waffles with the remaining nut paste and put it on top of the cream. That's it, we send our mold into the freezer. Two days later, everything's hardened up. Therefore, we move on to the next step. We're gonna open up some milk chocolate and send it into a Marmite. Turn it on so this starts to heat up and stirring constantly melt that chocolate. Now it's liquid, but to make it even better on the bar, you need to add some oil. And mix. It's much more liquidy now. Now it's time to get the mold out of the freezer. We transfer the liquid chocolate onto the waffles and smear it around. We keep doing this until we cover the entire surface with chocolate. Now let's put some more chocolate into the Marmite. We put a sheet of chipboard on top of the bar and press it as hard as possible with stretch film.
first we lower the form to the floor. And then we already turn it over into this little thing covered with film. Now the stretch foam can be removed. Carefully lift up the mold. And tear off the parchment. And open up the film around that wooden semicircle. We screw a self-tapping screw into it and take it out. And then we remove the film itself. The extra milk chocolate pellets have already been melted. Therefore, we scoop milk chocolate with a measuring cup and just pour it all over our bar. We do one more layer. And then just let the chocolate harden. Now we just need to repeat only these thin strips of dark chocolate. Therefore, put a bowl on a steam bath, put some dark chocolate into it. And constantly stirring, melt it. Our already liquid chocolate is poured into a pastry bag. And we pour this over the bar. That's it, our giant Kinder Bueno is finally ready. I think it turned out just perfect, you guys. Well, let's cut off a piece. Hey everybody, today we received a long-awaited package straight from Kamchatka. We open it. Inside we see bottles of ice and Kamchatka crab. It was difficult to get it because we got it whole. It weighs about four kilograms. Let's open her up. When folded up, it's not that big. If you straighten his little legs, you can immediately see that this is a monster that was taken from the bottom of the ocean. There are many types of crabs, but there's usually not much to eat in them. And there's a lot of meat in this one. Therefore, it is considered the most expensive in the world. Our crab costs $220. It's already boiled. We need to get the meat out of it. We tear off the shell. We tear off the gills. And begin to unscrew the legs. We do this carefully because the spikes are pretty sharp. We pull out the remaining pieces of meat from the shell and we get a whole mountain of crab legs. They need to be broken at the joints. This should be done with each of its legs. Now we take one leg, cut it lengthwise with scissors, and take out a nice, whole, real crab stick. We throw the meat into the bowl. After about 20 minutes, we got all the meat from the crab. 
Now, there are $220 in this bowl. In this form, we can finally eat the crab. It tastes kind of like crawfish, only twice as saturated and the meat is juicier. Let's cook three completely different crab dishes. First up, Crab's Benedict. We'll need pieces of crab broken into fibers, all transferred into a bowl. We take a small green onion, cut it into circles, and put it with the crab. Put a grater on top and zest a lemon into this. Cut the lemon in half and squeeze out some juice. Olive oil and chili pepper. A little salt. Now mix it up. And our filling is ready. We put a saucepan with water on the stove. Let's salt the water. Pour in two tablespoons of vinegar. Break the egg into a cup. When the water starts to boil, we quickly stir it in a circle with a whisk to make a whirlpool. In the middle, in one movement, pour in the egg. Cook that for 20 seconds. We take this out with a slotted spoon and put it onto a paper towel. Now we're going to need two of those poached eggs. Now let's make a hollandaise sauce. To do this, we separate the egg yolk from the egg whites. We only need the yolk, or rather four yolks. We put them onto a steam bath and mix quickly. After 15 seconds, we remove it. Pour in a little vinegar and oil in a thin, thin stream and mix. Gradually, this mass thickens. It remains to add salt and pour it into a saucepan. We put the grill pan back on the stove and fry two of these buns on both sides until crisp. We put the buns on a plate, put the crab meat with dressing on top of them, level it, then our poached eggs. Now pour hollandaise sauce on top. And finally, you need to sprinkle all this with paprika. Our crab benedict is ready. We cut into the egg, and the yolk breaks as needed. Let's try it. Ah, oh, it's fucking delicious. Crispy toast, runny yolk, hollandaise sauce, and crab. A real royal breakfast. Next up, tom yam. All right, the ingredients we need are crab, scallops, and shrimp, coconut milk, tom yam paste, fish bouillon granules, fish sauce, oyster sauce, and cherry tomatoes. We open the bonito konzashi, pour the granules into the pan. Pour in two liters of boiling water and mix that so that the granules dissolve. This will give us a nice fish broth. Turn on the stove, bring the broth to a boil, and open the coconut milk. Although it looks more like a paste, we put all this into the pot. and to mix it up. Now our soup has turned white. So add fish sauce, a tablespoon of oyster sauce, and most importantly, tom yam paste. This contains all the Thai spices we need. We throw in a couple of spoons to the soup. Mix it up. Now for the seafood. Scallops, Peeled shrimp and Kamchatka crab. Cut the cherry tomatoes in half and drop those into the soup. We'll mix this for the last time and the crab tom yum is ready. We collect it into a ladle and fill our bowl up. Finally chop the greens 
sprinkle them on top. Let's taste test it. Ooh, this is one of the most intense soups I've ever eaten. Such a powerful, spicy soup with lots of seafood. For the third course, whole crab legs are needed. We cut these into pieces, which will be convenient to eat. Throw those into a bowl, and top of those with a couple of tablespoons of plain flour. Cover this with a flat plate and shake well. Open it up. All the pieces should be evenly covered with flour. Now let's put a frying pan onto heat. Pour in quite a lot of oil and put in our pieces to fry. Fry them on both sides to form a crispy crust. Remove the pan from the stove and drop the pieces into a deep bowl. Now let's open the oyster sauce. We'll pour that on top, cover with a plate and shake again. That's it, done. You can serve the crab pieces on a plate. This is a super sweet and sour crab. You can sprinkle it with green onions. And now it's definitely ready. Let's taste it. This is a very elite snack and it clearly tastes like it. Inside we have juicy crab, a crust of flour and a thin layer of oyster glaze on it. In general, I'm pretty delighted with this crab cake. Of all of the sea creatures like him that I've tried, whether it's lobster or shrimp or crayfish, Kamchatka crab is definitely the most delicious. All right, guys, if you want me to cook some unusual inhabitant of the ocean, then like this video. And as soon as we get 300,000 likes, we'll do just that. And if we get 500,000 likes, then we'll have a very large ocean dweller. Everything is in your hands. Write us in the comments, what do you think I'm planning to cook? See you guys soon.